So this is a follow-up of sorts to the video I made a couple of days ago about special IT classes being offered at Melbourne University. Remember that the Dean of the Engineering School at the University of Melbourne stated that IT was a male-dominated field and needed to be more balanced to reflect modern society. Now when you think about that, it's not much different to the it's the current year argument. The fact is, as I've stated before, there's no foundation for the idea that women should comprise 50% of students studying STEM subjects, or any other subject for that matter, or that they should be 50% of any occupational category. And for those that think that that's a sexist statement, I would say the exact same thing about men. Somewhere along the line, we've confused equality with equal representation, which is just a proxy for equality of outcome. And when it comes to STEM subjects, the evidence that the gender gap in STEM fields comes down to choice rather than some form of systematic discrimination just keeps piling on. Jordan Peterson is currently in Australia and Bettina Art managed to get a 45 minute interview with him in which they discuss some really interesting topics. I'll leave a link below if you want to watch the full interview. It's really worth your time. I just want to play a short segment about sex differences. In the, in the personality domain, you see that there are pronounced differences between men and women, particularly in the proclivity to experience negative emotion mm -hmm. and also the big five trait agreeableness. So women have a higher proclivity to experience negative emotion, which also manifests itself cross-culturally in higher rates among women for depression and anxiety yep. disorders mm -hmm. and dependent personality disorder as well. Whereas with men, you see more learning disabilities, alcoholism, antisocial behavior, that sort of thing. And then in agreeableness, women are higher in agreeableness. And those differences, and this sh cannot be shouted from the rooftops enough. The more egalitarian this society, the larger the differences. Yep. So, and then the same goes for interest, people versus things. And then, and that manifests itself in differential proclivity to enroll in STEM fields. So there was a great paper released, the Atlantic Monthly just wrote a, Mm -hmm. article on it this week showing that as societies become more egalitarian, the gap between enrollment, the, the enrollment gap between men and women in STEM fields increases. Yeah. So, but, and what do the feminists say about that? Pseudoscience. It's yeah. like, yeah. well, first of all, for a feminist who's influenced by someone like Judith Butler to claim anything is pseudoscience <laughs> is, is laughable beyond, beyond description, but it's infuriating to anyone who's a sensible social scientist and, and practitioner. Mm -hmm. Because no, first of all, those findings run counter to the bias that exists in social science, and second, no one was happy about reporting them. It's not like the social scientists went and had a big party when they found out that the differences between men and women in personality maximize in egalitarian societies. Mm -hmm. It was a shock. Yeah. So Peterson mentioned an article written in The Atlantic titled, The More Gender Equality, The Fewer Women in STEM. Though their numbers are growing, only 27% of all students taking the AP Computer Science exam in the United States are female. The gender gap only grows worse from there. Just 18% of American computer science college degrees go to women. This is in the United States, where many college men proudly describe themselves as male feminists, and girls are taught they can be anything they want to be. Meanwhile, in Algeria, 41% of college graduates in the field of science, technology, engineering and math, or STEM, as it's known, are female. Their employment discrimination against women is rife, and women are often pressured to make amends with their abusive husbands. And so from here, the author goes on to cite this recently published paper, The Gender Equality Paradox in Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Education. So this paper found exactly what the Atlantic article stated. There's a strong correlation between the level of gender equality and graduate rates in STEM fields. That result is best captured by this chart. As you can see, the countries with the highest level of gender equality as measured on the vertical axis, so in this case, Finland and Norway have relatively low graduation rates of females in STEM, barely above 20%. Whereas countries like the UAE, Turkey, Algeria and Tunisia, not exactly bastions of gender equality, have among the highest rates of female graduation in STEM fields. Probably one of the most important findings in this paper is it's not that women don't have the aptitude to take STEM subjects. In the more egalitarian societies, they just choose 
not to. So in terms of science literacy out of 67 countries, we find that girls outperform boys in 19 or 28 percent of countries. Boys outperform girls in 22 or 33 percent of countries. And there was no statistically significant difference in the remaining 26 or 39 percent of countries. So it's not that girls don't have the aptitude for it. But when it comes to intra-individual academic strengths, or put simply what you're best at at the individual level, in 97 percent of countries, boys were best at science, whereas in all countries, girls were better at reading. Another way to look at it is that across the 67 countries, 24% of girls had science as their strength, 25% of girls had mathematics as their strength, and 51% had reading. The corresponding values for boys were 38% science, 42% mathematics, and 20% reading. And again, those intra-individual differences were larger the more gender equal the society, as represented by this chart. These intra-individual differences, or what students are best at, is important because they are a good predictor of what they choose to study at university. For example, in Finland, girls outperform boys in science, but they performed even better in reading. Thus, girls were more likely to have a relative strength in reading, and thus more likely than boys to choose options in which they can gain the most benefit from their relative strength in reading. So again, in Finland, girls are just as capable, if not more so, than boys of undertaking STEM degrees, but they choose to go with their relative strength, which is in reading as do boys whose relative strength is in math and science. They also found that on average boys had more interest in and enjoyed science more than girls, more so again in the more gender equal countries. So the authors of this study calculated that if women chose to study STEM subjects in line with their aptitude for STEM subjects, they would be close to half of all STEM graduate students, 49% to be exact over the 67 countries as shown in the chart on the left. However, when you add in attitude, enjoyment and interest, and relative strength, the chart on the right, that falls to approximately 34%, which is still higher than the actual number observed in most countries, but much closer to reality. Now, the authors also observed that the countries with the highest gender equality tend to be welfare states, with a high level of social security for all its citizens. In contrast, the less gender equal countries have less secure and more difficult living conditions, likely leading to lower levels of life satisfaction. This may in turn influence one's utility beliefs about the value of science and pursuit of STEM occupations, given that these occupations are relatively high paying and thus provide the economic security that is less certain in countries that are low in gender equality. So ironically, cutting the welfare state, something women tend to vote for more of, might motivate them to take up higher paying careers in STEM in the more gender equal countries. The authors also note, and I think this is an important point, that there are careers that are not STEM by definition, although they often require STEM skills. For example, university programs related to health and healthcare, e.g. nursing and medicine, have a majority of women. This may partially explain why even fewer women than we estimated pursue a college degree in STEM fields, despite obvious STEM ability and interest. So to conclude, boys and girls are more likely to follow their own relative strengths when choosing what type of courses to study at university. And since boys are more likely to have a relative strength in math and science and girls in reading, that accounts for some part of the gap. Also, interest and enjoyment of science plays a role with boys more likely to be interested and enjoy science. And the better socioeconomic conditions in more gender equal countries allow women to make different choices than they might otherwise if living in poorer countries where financial rewards are more important. So this paper really comes down on the side of choice. Women are choosing to undertake subjects other than STEM, even though they have the aptitude for it, particularly in Western countries because they have that freedom of choice. You could make the argument that STEM fields are losing women that have high math and science ability to other fields, but as noted by the authors, women are dominating fields like medicine, which do require STEM abilities. But you also have to ask the question, do you want to spend enormous amounts of money on trying to convince some women to take STEM fields, even though they have higher ability and interest in other fields? Shouldn't we be letting women decide for themselves rather than trying to engineer a forced equality of outcome? As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.